Hey guys, welcome to Jack's Beautiful You. I'm super excited for today's video because we're gonna be talking about my favorite white floral fragrances. I am a huge white floral fan and I just love all different types of white florals. I like when white florals are the star of the show. I like when they're just kind of put in the background or maybe in the heart notes. I love all different kinds and I have a little bit of something here for everyone. If you're new here, hi, my name is Jackie. Thank you so much for clicking on my thumbnail today. I really appreciate you being here and I hope you will consider subscribing to my returning subscribers. Thank you guys so much for all your continued support I really appreciate you if you're interested in seeing my favorite white floral fragrances then just keep on watching All right, first up we have by YSL. This is Libra Intense. And this fragrance is vanilla forward for sure. I definitely get a lot of vanilla in this fragrance, but soon after comes a lot of white florals and then lavender. So that's basically the order of the accords that I get. I get vanilla, white florals, and lavender when I smell this. I think this is a beautiful winter white floral scent. If you love the combination of vanilla and white florals together, this is a beautiful, beautiful fragrance. The performance on this is absolutely outstanding. This is a beast mode perfume. I actually have to be careful not to spray too much of this or I actually will get a headache and just a couple of sprays is all I need and I really enjoy this in cold weather. This is boss babe. This is I'm in charge. This is a confident, mature, sophisticated, very powerful woman type of scent. I really love it when I'm in the mood for that kind of vibe. And like I said, the performance is all day. You have a beautiful scent bubble around you. So like I said, there's some lavender in here, there's some vanilla, there's bergamot, mandarin orange in here, but the white florals in here is orange blossom and jasmine. And I definitely pick up a little bit of, I think I pick up a little bit more of the orange blossom than I do the jasmine in here. And I am a big, big orange blossom fan. It's one of my favorite white florals of all time. And I can definitely pick it up in this fragrance. Plus I love the bottle. The bottle, I tell you guys, every time I talk about this perfume, I love the YSL on here. I love the gold neck and I just think this bottle looks very classy and sophisticated. It looks really beautiful on your vanity. And I just think this is a beautiful, really good bang for your buck, like worth the money because it performs so well and it smells so high quality to me. This is just one of those worth every penny kind of fragrances in my opinion. All right, up next we have by the house of Givenchy and this is Linterdi. This is the Eau de Parfum and I absolutely love this fragrance. Again, another very strong fragrance that I like to wear in the winter. So this is not a spring white floral for me. This is a winter cold weather white floral. This is very potent and radiates off of me to the moon and back, but when it's cold outside, this is absolutely gorgeous. If you like tuberose, you will like this fragrance, but it does have a little bit of a bubblegummy tuberose. There's not just tuberose in here. They have, there's tuberose, orange blossom, and jasmine sandback in the heart of this fragrance, and I would say I do pick up all of those white florals, but the tuberose is the strongest for sure. There's also pear and bergamot in the opening, which I love in this perfume. The pear just gives it this sweet, juicy vibe and then in the base you have patchouli vanilla and broxen and vetiver and I would say the patchouli is there but it's very smooth and just warm there's a lot of vanilla and I do pick up a little bit of the ambroxan in here this is just a classy sophisticated white floral fragrance that's perfect for cold weather so if you're still living somewhere where it's pretty cold this is a perfect one right now if you're craving white florals but you need something that is going to cut through the cold then Linterdi Eau de Parfum is definitely the white floral fragrance for you excellent beast mode performance for sure. And then we also have Linterdi Rouge for all of you out there who like a little bit of a warm and spicy kick to your fragrances. This is warm, spicy, and white floral, and I love this one. This one is sexy. This one is really good performing as well, but it's not quite the beast as the Eau de Parfum is, but it's still a really good performing perfume. This has ginger in the opening of this, and I definitely 
pick that up. I love ginger in my perfumes. This is ginger and blood orange in the opening and I just think it gives this like warm, spicy, but sweet twist to the fragrance. And then you have the tuberose and you have the jasmine. There's no orange blossom in here but lots of tuberose in here so you do have to be a tuberose fan although I would say the tuberose is not in your face. It's not punchy, bubblegummy. I mean it's bubblegummy tuberose but it's not overpowering if that makes sense. But you do still have to be a fan of tuberose because it's definitely in here. There's pimento leaf in here which I think is giving to that warm spicy feel. I just love this one. There's sandalwood in here, which does give it this creamy vibe. There's patchouli and vetiver. I love this flanker. I honestly don't know which one I prefer. I think it just depends on the mood that I'm in, but I really love the combination of sweet and spicy together, and then mix it with my favorite white florals, and I just love it. This is spicy, sweet, and white floral goodness. And it's sexy, it's fun, it's great performing, and I love the color of the bottle. This blood red color just really fits with the way that this smells. It's it's warm, spicy, the way that it looks in the bottle for sure. So love this one. I'm not sure, like I said, which one I like more. I like them both quite a bit and I think they're beautiful white floral fragrances. So this is Linter de Rouge by the house of Givenchy. Another white floral fragrance that I feel like is a little bit better suited for like the spring and summertime is by Kayali and this is Utopia Vanilla Coco 21. This one I am almost through with my travel size and I have decided I do want a full size bottle of this because I really like this one, but when I first got it, it kind of threw me off because I was expecting more of a vanilla and coconut vibe, and I got more white florals than I did anything, but it does still have a coconutty, vanilla, summertime, creamy kind of vibe to it, but the white florals are definitely present specifically jasmine. So there's coconut milk in the opening, there's honeysuckle in the opening, and there's pear blossom, Italian lemon. There's jasmine, tuberose, and gardenia in the heart of this. And like I said, the number one white floral I get is jasmine, but as you can see, there's quite a few white florals in here. So I really just needed time to adjust to that because that's not what I was expecting. I expected a coconut forward fragrance. This is a white floral forward fragrance with coconut in it. There's musk mallow in here, there's vanilla, sandalwood, musk, and patchouli in the base. I think it's absolutely beautiful. I get decent performance out of this. It's just moderate. It's not a beast. It's not weak for me either. It lasts a good six, seven hours, and the scent bubble is pretty moderate. I wouldn't say it's a skin scent, but it's definitely not a beast. Somewhere in between, you know? Uh, really, really enjoy this one, and it's an easy white floral to wear in the summer because it does give you those coconut vibes. Yeah, just an easy reach fragrance for spring and summer if you're craving some white florals but you don't want it to be cloying, you don't want it to be too much, you don't want it to be too sweet, or you don't want it to be too indolic either. I find white florals that are super indolic to be difficult to wear in the heat as well. So this is a perfect blend of everything, just kind of like an everyday easy reach signature scent for spring and summer for sure. Really, really enjoy this one. So this is by Kayali Utopia Vanilla Coco 21. Okay, you guys, I wanted to share with you real quick a lotion that I like to pair with a lot of my white floral scents. So this is called One in a Million, and this is by Bath & Body Works. This is such a beautiful, non-specific white floral fragrance. It kind of has that orange blossom, tuberose, jasmine kind of trifecta feel to it. I can't really pick out a specific white floral in this lotion, and it's not overpowering. It's just a beautiful layering lotion if you really love white florals. I put this down and then I put any of these white floral scents on top of it, and it's just beautiful. Plus, I feel like if you're nice and hydrated, it definitely helps to extend the wear of your perfume. So one in a million, if you're into white florals, this is a beautiful white floral lotion in my opinion. Really, really love this one. So if you're into layering combos, give this a shot with your favorite white floral scent. Okay, a serious white floral fragrance. That's kind of indolic, but I absolutely love it. And I do love to pair with this lotion is by Kim Kardashian and it is Kim Kardashian. This is such an affordable gem if you like white floral fragrances. Like I said, this is a bit 
indolic. I have a very, very high tolerance for white florals. I don't mind indolic white florals as long as it's not sharp. I don't like it when it gets to the point where it's sharp and harsh feeling. It still has to smell smooth, but I don't mind like a heady or heavy white floral scent. I actually like them, and that's kind of what this is. This doesn't feel sharp to me, but it feels very heady white floral. It smells a lot like Toka's Florence. If you've ever tried Florence, this smells very similar or Gucci Bloom is pretty similar as well. So there are a lot of white florals in here. There's African orange flower, there's tuberose, there's gardenia and jasmine in here. And for me, the star of the show is gardenia. So if you love gardenia and you love Florence, Gucci Bloom, give this one a shot because this is a fraction of the price really, really good performance. I love wearing this in the spring. It's my only time that I wear this fragrance because I get in the mood for these heavier white florals when it's not so hot out that it's too much, but it's getting, you know, warmer, but not hot. This is 75 and sunny degree weather for me, and I just love this one. So if you like gardenia, give this one a shot. I think I paid less than $20 for this. A really, really good gem. All right, up next we have by Mansara. This is Velvet Vanilla. Now, don't let the name of this fragrance fool you. Yes, there's vanilla in here. I do get a lot of vanilla in the dry down, but this is a white floral fragrance for sure, specifically tuberose. If you've been watching my channel, you know that I absolutely adore tuberose and I love this scent, but beware if you do not like tuberose, specifically the really bubblegummy kind of tuberose, you're not going to like this. This should be called Velvet Tuberose for sure. There's pear in the opening of this and there's angelica. I do pick up a lot of the angelica in here, so it also has a green touch to it. I really like that because I think without that greenness, this would be overbearing. This would be too much for me. This would be too sweet for me. I still can really only wear this one in the fall and winter. This is a good cold weather fragrance because the performance of this is so strong. I think maybe I could get away with wearing it in the spring if I just sprayed like one or two sprays, but this is pretty strong and the performance on this is definitely beast mode. So if you like the idea of pear and angelica in the opening, if you like the idea of a really beautiful bubblegummy strong tuberose and then some really creamy velvety vanilla in the base, then this is the fragrance for you. If you don't like that, if you don't like green, if you don't like angelica, and if you don't like tuberose, you are not gonna like this. To me, this smells so bubblegummy tuberose that it actually reminds me of real bubblegum. It still smells like a perfume, so I'm not saying that this smells like actual bubblegum, but it definitely gives me thoughts of bubblegum when I smell it. When it dries down, the vanilla definitely comes through and it's very sweet, almost like cupcakey frosting vanilla to my nose, and I just love the entire wear of this fragrance. I love the journey, I love the performance, I just love this one. So that is by Mansara Velvet Vanilla. All right, speaking of tuberose, my very favorite tuberose scent of all time is by Giorgio Romani My Way. But there's not just tuberose in here. There is also orange blossom. There's orange blossom and bergamot in the opening, so you have a bit of that. I definitely pick that up. I pick up that orange blossom and that bright citrusy opening, but then the tuberose comes through and it's pretty strong. Again, it is a punchy tuberose that smells very bubblegum-like. This is one of my all-time favorite perfumes, top 10 for life. I adore this fragrance, which is hilarious because I've told you guys before when I first tried this fragrance, I didn't like it totally dismissed it and now it's funny because it's been in my top 10 for life forever now. Just I cannot be without this perfume. There's also Indian Jasmine but really I just get Orange Blossom and Tuberose. I don't pick up much Jasmine in this at all. And then in the base you have Madagascar Vanilla, White Musk, and Virginian Cedar. I definitely pick up a ton of the vanilla, a little bit of the musk, and a tiny touch of the woody notes I would say I do get in the base of this fragrance. I have told you guys before that this is my signature scent if I had a signature scent. I don't have a signature scent because I have too many perfumes for that, but if I didn't, I would wear this one. I feel like I can wear this anytime, any place, any season. This never lets me down. I always enjoy it every time I wear it. My husband loves this one on me. I get compliments on this one and the performance is outstanding. This lasts all day with a very beautiful sillage around me through the entire day. 
I have never been disappointed when I have chosen this to be my scent of the day. And like I said, this is one of my husband's favorite fragrances on me and one of my favorite fragrances of all time. So I adore it. This is the original My Way Eau de Parfum. I do love the intense one as well and the floral, but this is my favorite. So that is by Giorgio Armani, My Way, the Eau de Parfum. If you're looking for the ultimate white floral springtime scent, then you need to check out by Chanel Gabrielle Essence, the Eau de Parfum. This is absolutely gorgeous. It's such a feminine, easy to wear springtime white floral scent. It's not too much. It's not overpowering. It is just right. It's got some fruity notes in the opening. There's peach, there's red fruits, there's citruses. Oh, there's pedigree in here. You know what? This is the first time <laughs> I'm looking at the notes, and this is the first time I've ever noticed there's pedigree, and I usually despise that note. Okay, well, I shouldn't say I usually despise it, but it was in Sintra, and I told you guys before I couldn't stand that fragrance because of that green, harsh pedigree note running through it. Anyway, I don't let that scare you. If you're like me and you look, you see pedigree and you want to run for the hills, I don't smell any of that in here. There's no, there is absolutely nothing harsh in this fragrance. There's white flowers, there's tuberose, ylang ylang, jasmine. So it does have yellow florals in here as well as white florals. And I definitely pick that up. I definitely get a bit of a tropical kind of floral vibe in here along with the white florals and that kind of helps make it feel more spring summer to me and then there's musk vanilla and sandalwood in the base this is beautiful the performance is moderate on this i will say i don't think the performance is the best on this perfume but it's not the worst it's not terrible i'd say it's just moderate all around i think i get about five to six hours with a moderate projection you know it's definitely not going to be cloying it's definitely not going to be too much but this is a beauty and just such an elegant, airy, light, feminine spring scent. It just kind of makes me happy when I wear it. So I really enjoy Gabrielle Essence, the Eau de Parfum by Chanel, especially in the springtime. All right, up next we have one by the house of Veronique Goodbye. This is Souvenirs de Tunisie. This was sent to me in PR, just full disclosure, but I absolutely love it. I fell in love with it. They sent me this and a few samples and I fell in love with this fragrance and a few others from the house. So they have a jasmine centered one and that one I really love but I don't have a full bottle of it yet. It's called Jasmine de Minoui I think and it is one of the most beautiful jasmine scents so I want a full bottle of that one. That's another really great white floral if you're into jasmine but this one is beautiful citrus white flower fragrance. This is perfect for summertime because this has some like aquatic notes in it some watery notes that reminds me of standing by the ocean so I picture myself standing by the ocean and there's a lot of orange blossom in here orange blossom is the star of the show so I just love this one this is I wore this yesterday actually and it was just absolutely beautiful it wasn't on my tray but I was just craving it and I did pair it with this lotion, by the way. So yesterday I wore this lotion with this and I was just in love with the way that I smelled. So like I said, Orange Blossom is the star of the show, but I do get those watery ocean vibes, kind of like you're getting this ocean breeze, you're standing on the ocean, you're smelling all this gorgeous orange blossom in the air. There's also almonds in here, so there's a touch of like sweet almonds and there's orange in here as well. So I just picture myself having this like picnic on the beach eating almonds and oranges smelling orange blossom and catching that ocean breeze and I think it is beautiful the performance is moderate it's not a beast fragrance I don't think any of the Veronique goodbye ones that I tried were beast mode or super strong fragrances that is one thing I do wish this one had a little bit longer lasting power I got about five hours out of this I could smell it on me yesterday for about five hours layered on top of the lotion and I was kind of like uh, I wish it lasted just a little bit longer but during those five hours the performance or the sillage I guess you could say the scent bubble was pretty moderate I could definitely smell it I was definitely getting wafts of it off of me but I wish it was you know I don't five hours is acceptable to me but usually I like a little bit more seven to eight hours is usually my preferred amount of time that I would like a fragrance to last this one gave me about five, but 
Anyway, I'm not complaining too much though because the scent is absolutely gorgeous and it is so enjoyable while it lasts for sure. So definitely love this one. I definitely recommend it because it is it is one of my favorite orange blossom fragrances. I really love when I can smell an ocean breeze in a fragrance. That gets me. And a lot of Veronique Goodbye's fragrances, there's this like watery ocean breeze in the mid, like in the heart of their fragrances, and it just it just captures me. <laughs> it just captures me. So definitely interested in more of the house and I definitely recommend this fragrance. This is Souvenirs de Tanisi by Veronique Goodbye. Another beautiful white floral and citrusy combination fragrance is by Valentino and this is Voce Viva Intensa. The Intensa version is where it's at. I tried the original, which was nice, but the Intense version is definitely my favorite. This is a beautiful, citrusy, white floral, everyday, pretty girl fragrance. Now, I know some people would consider this to be boring, designer, you know, and that's fine to each their own. If this is too plain for you, that's totally fine. I get it. I get some people feel that way, but I like to have fragrances in my collection that are just going to be super easy to wear. They're not complicated. They're not complex. Don't get me wrong. I love my niche, complicated, complex fragrances, but every once in a while, if I'm just going to go out, like yesterday, you know, my husband and I, we went to a wolf enclosure. Like we went to go visit some red wolves that are endangered and it's like a place that they can go to to stay safe and if they're injured, they get treatment and things like that. So we went to this wildlife red wolf thing and we were walking around outside looking at wolves, you know, and I didn't need something that was going to be just absolutely the most complex and out there fragrance in the world. This fragrance right here was what I wore and it was perfect. It's not, this is not really, this is a niche fragrance and it's a high quality fragrance, but it's not overly complex. And this is kind of the same. This is not overly complex and it's perfect for those days when you're just not going to be doing anything super serious but you still want to smell amazing. This is a church scent, meet the parents scent, office friendly, going to work type of scent. You're not going to offend anybody but it is absolutely beautiful. Out of all the citrusy white floral designer scents that are out there, this one is one of my top top favorites and the performance of this is awesome and I have gotten multiple compliments on this fragrance. So there's mandarin orange and bergamot in the opening. Definitely pick that up. It's very citrusy at the top and then you have orange blossom and jasmine sandback are the white florals in here and it, like I said I love both jasmine and orange blossom. I don't know though that I necessarily pick it. Well, now that I'm smelling it, I think I pick out more orange blossom than I do jasmine. And then in the base, you have bourbon vanilla. Definitely pick that up. And there is a bit of moss in here as well, which normally isn't my favorite thing, but it's so light in here that it doesn't bother me. Sometimes moss can come across as bad breath to me, or it can be too much, but it's very, very well blended in here. It's very toned down, and it's just slightly running through the base. It's not... It's not too much for me. So I love this one and I highly recommend great performing perfume and just a beautiful easy reach springtime citrusy white floral everyday fragrance that I love. Plus I love the bottle. I, I like Valentino's bottles. You know, they always have something kind of cool. They have these like spikes on the cap. I just like the bottle designs of Valentino. I think they have cool bottles. So this is Voce Viva Intensa. Okay, and last but not least, this was my favorite designer release of 2022. And this is one of my most complimented perfumes of 2022. This is by Mugler and this is Alien Goddess Intense. I went through an entire travel size of this first before I got this one and I absolutely loved it. It was love at first sniff and and like I said, I got a lot of compliments. Now, the original OG Alien is too jasmine forward for me. It's too sharp. It's too heady. It's too much for me. The Alien Goddess that came out, I liked it, but it was too similar and familiar to other beachy, coconutty, tropical scents that I already had in my collection. But when this came out, it felt like the perfect marriage between the OG and Alien Goddess. They came together, they had a baby, and they made this perfect concoction for me anyway because the jasmine in here is definitely 
present. There's an alien jasmine in here for sure, but it is so much smoother than the OG to my nose and so much easier to wear. Plus, I love the added coconut in here. It's not the star of the show, but it is definitely present and it makes it very creamy and beautiful. So there's coconut and bergamot in the opening and I love that. I just, I love coconut in my fragrances. There's jasmine and jasmine tea. Again, it smells like alien jasmine for sure. There's an alien DNA in here, but it's not heady. It's not overpowering to me. It's not indolic at all. It's just very smooth. In the base, you have vanilla. I definitely pick up a ton of vanilla in here. And then there is benzoin and cashmere wood. So this is vanilla. This is white floral. This is ambery, but this is one of those fragrances that I feel like you could wear all year round. This would not be too much. That coconut helps to kind of give it a tropical summertime feel in the spring and summer with the white florals. It kind of reminds me of spring and summer and then, but it's also ambery and vanilla enough that I feel like I could also wear this in the fall and winter. So I was having a really difficult time trying to determine what season I would wear this in and it just dawned on me that there's no season for this for me. This just fits. This would be a great signature scent. The performance on this is moderate. I really don't have issues with the performance at all. I get a good seven, eight hours out of this with a moderate sillage. It's not a beast, but it's it's not like the OG. It's not a beast because the OG is a beast on me. It is like overpowering fill up a room type of fragrance on me. But this one is moderate with a moderate scent bubble. So beautiful fragrance, appropriate again for any occasion, any season, would make a fantastic signature scent. I truly love this one. This is by Mugler, Alien Goddess Intense. All right, you guys, that is it for today's video. Those are some of my favorite white floral fragrances in my collection, and I would love to hear from you. I wanna know what are some of your favorite white floral fragrances that you wanna to recommend to me? I would love to try them out. You guys know that I love to buy perfume, so go ahead and enable me. <laughs> Thank you guys so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel, and I will see you in my next video. Bye!